Battle's not always easy, Jess, but you got through it, brother. Um, tell us about it, man. Oh man, um, um, March 18th was an exciting night. You know what I mean? The crowd was, you know, sold out crowd. My hometown, a lot of love in the building. You know, um, the fight, the fight actually, you know, was a good fight. You know, I, I can't, you know, I, I don't take nothing from away from the journey, man. But what I learned, what Floyd Mayweather said, is is true. You know, um. It's, the, it's not the guy with the perfect record you, you always have to look out for. Mm -hmm. It's the guy with a record, a journeyman record. You know, um, Deshaun Johnson came in with a journeyman record. And I didn't, I thought Floyd Mayweather was lying when he said Emmanuel Augustus was his toughest fight. A journeyman. He was, I think, 22 and 19 or 22 and 20 when Floyd Mayweather fought him. Definitely. You know what I mean? And this one, Floyd, after Floyd Mayweather was world champion and he was criticized for that fight. You know, you world champion when you don't fight a journeyman. And mm -hmm. Floyd, you know, Floyd said, I learned something. It's, the, it's not the guy with the perfect record because they can be built up and they can be hype jobs. You know? You understand what I'm saying? No, it's definitely. the guy that's tough. Like Emmanuel Augustus when Floyd fought him. Floyd Mayweather still said it to this day. That Emmanuel Augustus was the toughest fight. You know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. Um, um, we we seen numerous interviews with Floyd Mayweather said that about a journeyman. So you know, um, Deshaun Johnson was a tough, tough journeyman. I, I it's, 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 I can't explain no more. He was tough. He was a tough fight. Tough, tough journeyman. You know what I mean? Like I said, you know, he, he even knocked me down. I got back up. You know, I go back to Henry Cooper and Muhammad Ali. Yeah. You know, uh, um, Henry Cooper got dropped Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali got up, persevered through that. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? It's, it's different things. It's different characteristics that I learned. I learned a lot from that fight. You know, um, I was dominating the whole fight. Dominating. I mean, the guy was fighting rough. I mean, fighting dirty, behind the head shots, elbows, using his head. Dirty little tactics that I learned from the tricks of the trade that you still have to concentrate to, through and fight through. You understand what I'm saying? For sure. Um, uh, you, you got Andre Ward, you know, when he put Darnell Boom, another tough, tough journeyman. Dropped Andre Ward. Andre Ward got up, persevered, and made Andre Ward a better fighter. Every, each, each of these fights that I, I'm naming, every time a fighter came out, it made him a better fighter than what they already were. They, they always they always say in boxing, Jesse, sometimes you learn not it wasn't a loss, but sometimes you learn more from adversity than success. It sounds like that's kind of the direction you're going in this. Like you learn more from this tough fight than you did in some of your, you know, uh more successful fights. Right. I, I, I learned from I, I learned more from this fight than I did when I fought on the May second card, when I fought a guy that was undefeated, eighteen and up. Uh-huh. You know, I learned more from this fight than that fight. Um you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really, truly believe that Emmanuel Augustus was Floyd Mayweather the hardest fight now. I really, truly believe him when he say that. A journeyman, a tough, tough journeyman like that. You know what I mean? Had, had, Floyd Mayweather was already world champion. He was fighting a guy that was 22 and 19. And Emmanuel Augustus. I truly believe that, 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 that you know, that was his toughest fight. Because I know how I, what I just went through with a journeyman. You, you feel like he's your Emmanuel Augustus, and, and if so, how do you elevate your game? Because like you said, when you name Sir Henry Cooper, um, Emmanuel Augustus, Darnell Boone, those guys elevated their game after those type of fights. What, what do you feel you have to do to elevate your game, Jesse? And, and oh, man. Oh, man, just keep doing I'm, and better, better, getting better at my craft. Not worried about the outside world or not worried about what people mad about and the self-belief that I have in myself. Not worried about the critics. Not worried about the outside world. Keep getting better at my craft and honing my skills. Because there's guys out like that out there, you gotta learn different tricks of the trades now that I mm -hmm. see that I see now. You gotta learn different tricks. You gotta learn different 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 things in there that these guys don't that this guy did to me that made me look at things a whole lot more. A whole, I got a whole new outlook on the craft of boxing, the art of it, you know, the skullduggery of it all, the cuttingness of it all. I, I got a whole new outlook on, 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 on it. You know what I mean? Uh, and people, you know, that sitting home on a couch, bloggers, fat guys, out of shape, don't know, don't know a jam from a right hand, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that always have something to say. But I just gave you 
I just gave you, I showed the people that I can stand up to adversity and face it. You know, we, we know that I got heart. I'm not just talking out my behind no more. We know I got heart. We know I can persevere through adversity. I've been knocked down, got back up. I mean, when, dark, when, 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 when Andre Ward came out the Olympics with a gold medal, they said, oh, he's not going to be now. He just got dropped by a journey. Yeah. He was really out yeah. with that uppercut. Absolutely. Now look at him, he's a best fighter in the game, one of the best fighters in the game of boxing today. He persevered through that early in his career. That happened to him early in his career. For sure, man. For saying? sure, for these sure. Things like these things, <clears throat> look Excuse at Muhammad me. Ali when he fought Henry Cooper, another journeyman. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I said, Floyd me what the list goes on with journeymen. These guys elevate their careers. Afterwards, I, I learned a lot. I'm going to elevate my career now. Y'all will, will not see that again. Y'all will not see that again because I know what to look for now. We, we just talked about how long your camp was. It's not an excuse, but you did have a long camp because you thought you were going to be on one card. It got pushed back. Um, that being said, man, I, I guess what I'm saying is I know you didn't overlook Johnson, but did the pressures of fighting at home and having people grab at you for tickets, did that kind of play a part of it, or was it just Johnson was, was what you said he is? Is this a tough, tough journeyman? Johnson was a tough, tough journeyman. I'm not taking no credit away from him. You know what I mean? I'm, I, 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 I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? He came in and 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 got beat. Got this. I beat this man for seven rounds. Seven to eight rounds. Beat this man. Mm -hmm. Beat literally. Beat, I watched the tape four times. I beat this man and beat this man till I couldn't beat this kid no more. And this kid stood up. The kid stood up to a beating, to a tremendous beating. Like I said, he was learning, he was doing different tricks of the trade. I mean, with his head, with elbow, using things, tactics that I never knew existed. Mm -hmm. You know, that can wear a man down. You know, I, I just never knew that these things can wear me down and or or, or 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 have an effect on me in the later rounds. You know, but they did. And like I said, I didn't conserve no energy. I thought, you know, just by him being a, his record, I'm going to get this guy out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I normally play a part. But I really had to dig deep within myself and find it, you know. So all this talk about, you know, different things, I didn't even handle tickets. My team was handling t ticket sales. I mean, I was promoting. That's part of the game. You got to sell. I had to sell a fight. Definitely. Like I said, I had I sold it out. It was, the arena was sold out. Standing room. I'm talking about all the tickets was gone. It wasn't one ticket left, even at the box office. So when you got that, I had, to, I, it was, it, I had to do some promoting. I had to do some promoting. And like I said, I don't, you know, I don't feel bad about this fight. I don't even feel, you know, like I said, it was a tough, tough journeyman. Like Floyd Mayweather said about Manuel Custis. Like Andre Ward said about Darnell Boone. Like Muhammad Ali said about Henry Cooper. Mm -hmm. I watched the interviews of these great, great men that we so-called great fighters. And I used to say the same thing. Henry Cooper was a tough journey. He was a rough one. He refused to lay down. Had it, had it been for the cut, I don't know, man. It, I, maybe I would have been in the rough one. Andre Ward, how he received criticism after he fought Darnell Boone. After Darnell Boone dropped him early, viciously. Mm -hmm. Boy, Mayweather, how much criticism he got when he became champion of the world and fought a guy with a 22 or 19 record. He still said that was the toughest fight of his career. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. You I, know, things like that, person, you got to look at and take in consideration. The guy was tough. I didn't expect him to be that tough. And, and, and make no more. All these factors that you got to go through. He fought at a lighter weight class. I fought that man that he's walking around with. Mm -hmm. I fought him at 168. That, he, said, he came in like 168. He came, no, he came in 166. The next day on the rewind, he came in 168. It's crazy. I fought this man that he's walking around with. He didn't have to rehydrate. He didn't have to lose no weight. He didn't have to cut weight. This was his walking around weight. I fought a man. I take no credit away from Dishon Johnson. He came in to fight. He came in to, 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 to be a, a tough fight. Is is a is, is it a little bit of a, a silver lining you just being the fact that you promised your hometown fans an exciting fight? I know you didn't want to 
go down late and things like that. But the fact of the matter is, you know, everyone talked about how exciting and how good of a fight this was. Yeah. And, and see, that's, 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 that's the thing. See, they wanted to see. I'm glad that, that people said that this is a fair fight because we used to say Jesse knock guys out. We used to say Jesse not lose a round. We used to say Jesse just dom- completely dominate a fight. Even with undefeated fighters, we're usually, we're used to saying this with him. We're not used to seeing him with him handling adversity. We're not used to seeing him getting hit. We're not used to seeing him what it's going to be like after he get hit. We're not used to seeing him. We're not used to seeing him how he responds to after he's going to get hit. We're not used to seeing that with Jesse. We used to see him dominate and dominate in incredible fashion, knock somebody out, a knock, a knock, a, a knock down drag out fight. What was you know, what, what was going? I'm sorry, I, I want to ask you right quick. What was going through your mind, man, when, I mean, you, you dealt with adversity, time is ticking, man, and you're on the ground. What, what, were going, what was going through your mind? Was it just all about getting up or, or, and, and just not staying down? Uh, that, yes, that was like, I, I am too great. I am, I'm a great fighter. Great fighters persevere through these things. Mm-hmm. Get up, champ. You the champ, get up, stand up like one. And um, I got up. I got up. I mean, I looked at the ref. It was part exhaustion. It was part punch, part exhaustion. In the later rounds, I was exhausted. I was. I watched the tape. I hit this man with an eight-piece combination. And I'm at 168. There's no way I should have been throwing eight-punch combinations. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I watched that. That was a mistake in my part because I was I was going for the knockout too hard in front of my hometown team. You know, after he stood up, after he stood up to the... First three, four shots, I should have backed up and went back to my jab and got back to box smartly. The guy stood up. The guy, the guy took the shots well. So when I'm on the, when, I'm, when my back is on the canvas, I'm saying to myself, "Get up, Jess. We can't. We ain't. We ain't standing there." So I rolled over on my knee. I'm getting my air. I'm listening to the referee count. I'm, re- I'm listening to the referee count. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to the referee count, and then I get right up. I get, I get right up and take a deep breath and tuck my chin, put my hands up, and I was, and I proceeded to, you know what I mean, keep boxing and moving. I, I proceeded that. My legs was there. My faculties was there. My mind was still there. Everything was still there. I got hit with a punch. Like I said, it was part punch, part exhaustion. Mm-hmm. And he tried the same punch three times. I got caught with the third one. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. He tried the same punch three times. Mm-hmm. I was exhausted, exhilarated. I mean, I punched myself out. I mean, I mean, like I said, I learned a lot from that fight. I learned what you have to do in that fight. I learned different things. So, like I said, when I went down, I got, I got, I got up. I, t- I went on my knee. I listened to the ref count to eight. I kept getting my air as much as I can. I'm getting my air. I'm getting my air. I'm getting my air. And then I jumped up at eight. I said, "Come on, let's go." In my mind, I said, let's, "Now let's fight." Now let's fight now. Hmm. I took my hands up. I proceeded to step to him. The bell said, ding. I put my hands up for the battery because I knew I had won the fight. No question about it. Mm-hmm. And I won unanimously. It wasn't a split decision. It wasn't a majority decision. It wasn't even close. He got he had a he had good moments. He had a good moment. He didn't have a good fight. He didn't have a good round. He had a good moment. Mm-hmm. You you put up you put up a picture just with with your dad and you said this you think that's the most proud as you've ever seen him of you. Um, do you think that was just because he saw you go through so every every trainer every father want to know if their fighter or their son has that dog in him. Do you think he was so proud of you more so than your dominating wins because he saw you had what it take to be a fighter? Absolutely, absolutely, and and, and then it's just like. You know, I, I, and I'm just so astounded. I was so astounded by that, but I was so proud after that because I gained my father's respect. Mm-hmm. I don't think my, my I knew my dad respected me, but he come from that old school. He come from that old school mentality where them fighters only respect them type of fighters. Yeah, that get up and that keep rumbling hard and that keep fighting. Get up, not them, them Joe Frazier type fighters. Mm-hmm. That's all my dad understands. Them them guys got his respect. He said Joe Frazier was his favorite fighter, my dad. Joe Frazier is my dad idol. Mm-hmm. I got knocked down. I got up. My dad cried and said, man, I love you. That was the best I ever seen you look, son. 
And that means more to me than the actual fight. That, and that means more to me than what anybody got to say, any critic, anybody. My dad, for my dad to say that out of all my fights I had, it's like, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting teary, te- first teary out it right now because, you know, that's all I ever wanted mm-hmm. my whole career. Mm-hmm. It's my dad approval, man. To say, to stamp me and say, son, you got what it took. And this always has been, uh, you ain't got it yet, son. You ain't, I ain't seen you, you know, you dominated. It's like, dad, I, I'm knocking these guys out, man. Mm-hmm. I just want an 18 and 0 guy on a big seven car and stop them in a the sixth round. Can I get my credit now? No, nah, champ. I, I can't. You did yeah. good, son. You did good, son. He come from that old school, though, man. You know, it takes a lot to impress these guys, man. And it was like, he was like this first. You did good, son. It was just always you did good. But that night, first March 18th, my dad said, you got it, dude. I'm so proud of you. Hugged me, embraced me. Hold, held me for like five minutes in his arms, man. I'm sure that was a win for you in, in itself, you know? That was, that was the that was the moment of that whole night. I still cherish to this day. That will, that will always be a, a moment in the history of my that's I think that's the greatest accomplishment even than the, than the May 2nd fight. That's good stuff. I think that's a greater accomplishment than that to see my father, you know, embrace me like that. 